Today I'll show you how to create PDF files with Interform 400. You can create PDF files in Interform 400 in three ways. You can create emails with attached PDF files. You can use the command merge spoof file PDF or you can use the PDF file naming definition. In this video I'll go into details about the PDF file naming definition. But before I do that I'll explain shortly about the merge spoof file PDF and then go deeper into the PDF file naming. So first I'll create a PDF file naming definition. I'll show you how you can test it uh, with a spoof file and finally how you can activate it in Autoforms control. So in order to create the PDF file naming definition you go into uh, Autoforms control and select option 4 finish definition and then you can create a, an additional definition with F6. For the PDF file naming you need to create at least one key then you create or you, it's optional to, to create uh, additional variables then you type in the path uh, and the name of those uh, PDF files you're going to create and here you can actually use variables and, and keys as a part of the path and, and file name. Then we need to select when you want a level break so it means if you you can to say that if there something is changing from one page to another then you want a new PDF file uh, from the, the single spool file. The variables and the, the keys you have defined they can be selected or should the positions of those in the spool file should be selected and uh, that's what you also need to remember and then finally you can call a user program in order to archive the created PDF file uh, via a user program. After you have defined the, the PDF file naming you can test it and there's actually an option inside the PDF file naming uh, where you can link it with a spoof file and check out the, the paths uh, and the file names that are going to be created. And finally you need to uh, if you want to automatically create uh, PDF files you need to go into Autoforms control and add a call to the definition you just created. So uh, let's go into the details. First of all let's take a look at the, the merge spoof file PDF command. Prompting this. Uh, so with this merge spoof file PDF you are actually merging a spoof file where you specify the spoof file identification right here and you're merging that with an overlay in a file set or an overlay selector and then you can also here in merge spoof file PDF define here on the second page what kind of output you want if you simply want a single stream file in the IFS or you want an email with a attached PDF file or if you're running this command in an interactive job you can with the asterisk view uh, get the, the immediately the PDF uh, results shown on your screen. But uh, if you want to use merge pool file PDF then you uh, do some programming uh, so that's why the normally it's not uh, used uh, via customers. The majority are using the uh, PDF file naming definition which I'll show you now. So let's go into that. From the main menu of Interform I select option 5 Autoforms control, option 4 finish definitions and here you can create a new one with F6 add and here I'll go through uh, one that I created previously. So this is a type 6 PDF file naming. So if we start from the top then you first need to define at least one key and you can think of a key like a variable uh, and that's something like a unique identification of the the PDF or PDF files uh, that you are going to create. So when I think of these keys I think normally of a document number like an invoice number or whatever something that uniquely identifies uh, the documents that you're going to create. So later you can use uh, uh, 
uh, these keys as a part of the, the path and file name. So here in this example, and I'll just show you here the the spoof file that I'm, I'm using for the definition. So this is the spoof file that I'm going to use for this definition, and the spoof file here is a is a spoof file that you can create through the service menu of Interform 400. You may notice here in this spoof file we have a four-digit number. If I just move down, you can see that this number is actually found in line 13, position 57 to 60. So I intend to use this four-digit number as a part of the file name uh, when I'm creating my files, uh, my PDF files later on. So this four-digit number is that the one that I have in mind uh, for this key. After creating my keys, I can move on and create variables. So you don't need necessarily to create more variables, but uh, it can be helpful if you want multiple uh, information uh, from your spoof file in the, the path and the file name. It could be the, the current date, uh, uh, month, uh, year, uh, date, whatever. Um, and that is then defined here through F6. So if you add a new variable, you can see that the, the contents of the variable can be in text from the spoof file, a spoof file attribute, an automatic numerator that keeps increasing, a, a date, it could be the current date or spoof file date, time and system name, or you can even call a user program to set up the value of your variables. Here I defined a variable one with exactly the same contents as key one just to show you how it could be defined. So first here we just define keys and variables and how long they are. Later we will be asked where to find them in the spoof file. Next option three that's where we define uh, the path and the file name of the PDF files that we're going to create. So it's defined like this, and here I can include reference to references to my keys and my variables as a part of the path. So just remember uh, to specify key or v1 here in, in uppercase, because it's really case sensitive in order for this replacement to, to take place. If I refer to a dynamic, uh, more one or more dynamic uh, directories, then I might want to Interform to be able to create additional directories on the fly. And uh, then of course also the question can come up uh, if you want to replace uh, existing PDF files or not. Option G here is something that we will eliminate and this is not uh, recommended to use that. If you want more space for the, for the path, you can press F9 expand so you can type in uh, a longer path and file name. Next issue is the, the document breaks, the level break. And normally if you have your, your the information of this key that keeps increasing or changing, for instance, the, the, the document number, if that is in a fixed place, then you need to create here only a single uh, sequence line without any uh, page selection criteria and just specify here when this information changes then you will get a new PDF file. If this information is, is moving around on the on the spoof file page then you can use the page selection criteria to, to say if I find this and that on my page then my break trigger is found in a different position. So this refers again to the four-digit number that I showed you earlier. After doing this, I also need to specify where my keys and variables are placed, and that's done by selecting option 8 here, keys and variables. So in this case, it's the same 
that doesn't need to be the case uh, but just uh, to show you how I define both a, a variable and a key so I have both for both of those I've used my four digit number and that's actually what I all I need if I wanted to archive my PDF files then I could call a program here through option 7 and that uh, program can then uh, will then get the complete path of the, the file as well as the information uh, the, the values of all my keys and variables that I list below and there are demo uh, sources uh, for, for such uh, user programs that you can find in the Interform 400 now we have defined our PDF file naming definition and th then it's actually possible to verify if the condition has been been created okay and and what the outcome would be if we s we selected a spool file uh, to be handled with this uh, PDF file naming so in order to test with a spool file I go into option 3 and select F14 test select an output queue where my spool file is placed select with 1 and hit enter and now you see all the files that would be created uh, if uh, this um, spool file would, would be used so we haven't created any anything yet it's just testing and verifying what would happen so we can avoid messing up the contents of the IFS so I'm actually pretty confident with, with this so th now I want to add uh, the call of this PDF file naming into Autoforms control to make automatic PDF files when there's a new spool file so here I go into option 1 auto forms control functions attached to output queues change the output queue that I want to change and here we have function n and I can show here with F23 that function n creates a PDF file we set up the condition in order to run this function so only if the form type of my spool file is demo in other case then I will create PDF files hit enter I'm going to merge with this overlay in this file set and I'm going to use this PDF file naming uh, for my merge I hit enter and enter again and that's it now I can add another line like here in line sequence line 2 to hold my original spool file before I can test uh, my definition I only need to make sure that this uh, autoforms control job runs and that's not the case at the moment so I just start it up with F option 8 here with option 8 and just for information you shouldn't use uh, this AFC input 1 queue for any production unless you're running a light version of Interform 400 so just keep this in mind so I just started it if I go into the output queue and release my spool file to F5 you can see now my spool file has been held and that is an indication that uh, Interform 400 is done creating uh, these uh, PDF files so I could go into the IFS and take a look at the, the contents here you see the three PDF files that has been created so we can just open one of them to verify that uh, how they actually look that's it for more details uh, of the PDF file naming definition I suggest that you refer to the Interform 400 manual and to uh, our other videos on YouTube. Goodbye.